Hi guys, welcome to another video in the Max Spear Velocity series. I think this is part three. Today we're going to get into much more detail. We have Dylan, our in-house engineer, going to talk about it. What they've been finding is pretty much the same as what I was discovering years ago in pool test. Prior to being able to film it, I found some strange abnormalities when trying to power up guns and I tended to stick with what I saw that worked in the pool in terms of accuracy and penetration. And those are pretty much how we've been setting up our guns all this time. In this series, we're trying to show with engineering, testing and mathematical calculations exactly what's been happening and why and how the spear becomes inaccurate or accurate and all the velocities involved. So it's been an extremely interesting exercise. What you're gonna be seeing is a very small portion of what's actually filmed underwater. We do, the majority of the filming is all about the testing, not about the filming. So the little bit we can put together here is just to show you in more detail what we are learning. Hope you enjoy this video. Hi guys. Today we're gonna to discuss a topic Rob mentioned at the start of this video series, the concept of maximum spear velocity. This has been a somewhat controversial topic on forums for years and is the source of a lot of debate in the spearfishing community. In this video, we're gonna take you through our understanding of the topic and how it affects the guns we produce. Please bear with us as this video is very information heavy. For this video, we're gonna deal with a 1200 roller gun, specifically this one. This gun is a GT setup, which uses a 16 mm band to drive a 7.5 mm shaft. As it's a roller gun, the band is pre-tensioned and as the band is pulled down the length of the gun, the tension is increased. A basic equation linking the force applied to the spear and its acceleration is shown here on screen, with the force from the rubber equaling the mass of the spear times its acceleration. The mass of a given spear is constant, so the higher the force applied by the rubber, the higher the acceleration of the spear will be. If we were to use the same rubber to drive a lighter spear, the acceleration of the spear will be greater as the mass is reduced while the force of the rubber remains constant. This concept is quite important later in the video. To begin our testing, we're gonna fire the gun with a standard GT setup using the 16 mm bands with a 7.5 mm spear. Shown here on screen is the result of the speed of the spear along the distance of the barrel. The gun was shot five times and the results were averaged to eliminate outlying results and any GoPro frame errors which could affect the data. As we can see, the spear gained speed quickly when the rubber tension was high at the start of the barrel and later more slowly as the rubbers relaxed. The spear reached its maximum speed shortly before it exited the barrel at around 1.2 meters, which was exactly what we would expect. If we take this result and calculate the way the speed changes, we can get a result of the acceleration profile of the gun. If we look back at our equation from earlier and use the weight of the spear, we can convert this graph to show the net force on the spear as it accelerates down the barrel. Now what we're gonna do is replace the 7.5 mm spear with a 7 mm spear and repeat the test. Using the exact same method as previously, we are able to calculate the net force the 7 mm spear is subject to. We can see that the force line starts off in good agreement with the previous results, but deviates more and more as the spear travels down the barrel. The rubber was stretched the same amount at all points along the barrel, so why does it seem like there's less force available to the 7mm spear? If we go in the other direction and use an 8mm spear, we can see that the trend continues in the opposite direction, with the 8mm spear seeming to have more force available to it than both the 7.5 and 7mm spear. Why does this happen? What is causing this reduction in force from the rubber? Some of this change can be caused by drag, as the spears are reaching higher speeds sooner, but the difference is too large for drag to account for everything. What we understand to be the cause of this force reduction is the effect of the contraction speed on the ability of a rubber to produce force. Put basically, the faster a rubber is contracting, the larger the reduction in force available compared to a static test. This is why we see the thinner spear experience a lower force toward the end of the gun than the thicker spear. Initially, as they are traveling slowly, the same force is available to them from the rubber. However, as they reach high speeds very quickly, a far reduced force is available to them over the later section of the barrel. As we can see from the graphs on screen, this reduced force still accelerates the spears to a higher speed. If we kept reducing the mass of the spears until there was no weight on the rubber, the result would be the limit speed of the rubber. This is the speed the rubber will get to over the length of the gun with no load. At this point, the rubber is using all of the available tension force to accelerate only itself. This is directly opposite to a static test with a scale. 
where the contraction speed is zero and all of the tension force can be read on the scale. But why does the speed limit matter to us? As we can see, if I want a gun that shoots faster, why am I not just using an ultra-thin shaft on this gun? The reality is that the limit speed has practical implications with how we are able to transfer force to a spear. In a setup like this, thin, light spears accelerate to a high speed over a very small portion of the barrel, which the spear can't handle without bending. After this, the spear receives less force for the rest of the barrel as the speed at which the rubber is contracting greatly reduces its ability to produce force. Shown here is a 6.3mm spear shot from the same 1.2m roller. The bend in the shaft is so great that it actually affected the speed results somewhat, with the acceleration seeming to increase and decrease as the spear flexed. A better approach for driving thin spears is to use a smaller diameter band to accelerate the spear more gradually over the length of the barrel. The spear will exit the barrel slightly slower than if it were subject to a higher initial force, but the reduced bending in the shaft greatly improves accuracy and reduces drag down the line, improving long range shots. Another question you may ask is, why does the 7.5mm spear not use the entire length of the barrel to accelerate, if this is one of our standard setups? The reason for this is the fact that rubbers age and lose performance over time. Although the graphs show that the 8mm shaft utilizes almost the entire barrel to accelerate and is arguably more efficient, what will happen after a few months of consistent use? The GT setup with the 7.5mm shaft is designed to allow for some reduction in the performance of the rubber over the lifetime of the gun without reducing the overall performance of the gun. As we can see from the results here, the limit speed of a spear gun isn't some unbreakable ceiling that we can't ever get through, as it's often described. Rather, it has practical implications for what spears we choose to use with what rubbers. The biggest takeaway from all of this information is that by shortening the rubbers on your gun or adding more powerful bands, you will not always see an improvement in the performance of the gun. An optimized gun balances power, accuracy, and long-term performance. So, there you have it from Dylan, Hope you enjoyed that. Stand by for the next. Well, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Thanks. How was that second sentence so hard to read? As this video is very information heavy. It's fun. I'm getting better. Fumbled a bit there, but is it good enough? Well, it's much better when I don't have to think. I'm going to have to do this quietly. Yeah, let's use AI to sort Dylan out. It's acceptable. <clears throat> Just can't get the second sentence out. That feels like such a pricky statement. Was, was the take okay?